fly may be one thing, but it's apparently true that learning to fly a helicopter is way more difficult. Add a second rotor and a totally different training regime is required. But thanks to emerging technologies and computer programs, large helicopters like the Chinook CF-47 are apparently getting much easier to fly. Even you could do it. That's what they say. Now this is the sort of maneuver that only the Chinook CF-47 can do. Its powerful tandem rotors allow it to position itself on the edge of cliffs, buildings, or in this case, a dam. And apparently, nearly anybody can do it. I had the opportunity to fly a simulator and they uh, were t the pilots were teasing myself and one of the Army guys about our ability to fly what's called a maintenance task evaluation on the old system. And uh, neither one of us could do that. And when we loaded the new control laws, both of us were actually able to fly and line the targets up and accomplish the mission. The new CF-47 Chinook has entered the digital age with a cockpit almost entirely controlled by computer. Hovering has always been one of the hardest maneuvers to accomplish in a helicopter. But now it can be done with your thumb. Put this green dot where you want it to be, and the aircraft will stay there. The various modes, once armed, the aircraft will, will then select what altitude source, what sources it's using to maintain both its altitude and its position over the ground. Once the system captures, it will move via the switches on the thrust rod or the switches on the cyclic in one foot increment. One click equals one foot. The new digital controls called Advanced Flight Control Systems also provide the crew with important information in dicey situations or during combat. This is the height above terrain banding and currently it's set for 200 feet. If I turn it on, it shows this area in red, the aircraft will actually impact at our current altitude, which happens to be the ground. So the ground, this all this ground is lower than us. This is actually at our level. We can also turn it to warning it's telling me that all the yellow areas are within 200 feet of the aircraft. Well, obviously it is since we're on the ground. The Chinook is already one of the most powerful helicopters in service today. The engines churn out a combined 4,868 horsepower with a top speed of over 280 kilometers an hour. A helicopter has been called a million pieces trying to shake themselves apart. As manufactured by Boeing, this latest model has cut almost a third of the pieces out of the design, making it lighter and structurally more sound. The twin rotors also give it an amazing payload capability. It can lift over nine tons. As we move forward in the airframe, we're in the area where most of our cargo would be or our troop seating. These troop seats can come down. We can seat up to 33 people, or we can put up to two Humvees in here or three 463L Air Force pallets in here completely loaded up. Daily Planet is the first foreign television crew to witness some of the new Chinook's capabilities. The card is essentially flash memory. What it does is it stores all the mission data and all the mission information that we take from the planning station and place it into the aircraft center console. The day starts in the flight preparation room. Each pilot sits at a laptop computer and enters the data for the coming flight, route, terrain, and danger zones. All are entered in the database that's how planning software works. The first exercise today is called catch and release. On the ground, the Humvee is ready. In the air, the flight engineer is hanging out of what's called the hell hole, an opening in the floor. As the chopper gets closer, his job is to guide the pilots, who at this point can't see a thing. Once the Humvee is securely attached, the ground crew skedaddles. As the Chinook begins to lift, the force of those twin rotors could literally knock a grown person off their feet. The CH-47 tandem rotor configuration is unique. It's shared with one other Boeing platform, the CH-46 C Knight. But tandem rotors are unique with no tail rotor, providing yaw control with those two. The advantage being it gives us additional lift capability instead of using power and contingency to control the yaw of the aircraft or the directional control of the aircraft. It also gives us better high hot performance. We're able to go in high altitude areas due to the tandem rotor configurations that typical tail rotor configurations cannot achieve. 
The extra power also means an unencumbered craft can lift off from hover at over 2 Gs. Because it is a combat helicopter, it can twist and turn in the air as well as deploy countermeasures in case of a missile attack. I think the biggest concern that you have is always safety, your safety, the air crew's safety, the, uh, the safety of the customer on the ground. Most helicopters need pretty level terrain to land, but not the Chinook. It's able to land on slopes and grades that would give other chopper pilots the creeps. And once it's loaded up, it can get out of dangerous situations in a flash. Some people call it the transport truck of the air, but in my opinion, it has a lot more going for it than your average 18-wheeler. Don't go away. After the break, we're going to meet some researchers trying to design a plane with wings that inflate. A plane that could one day fly on Mars. And of course, we're going to tell you all about it next.